Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review and a special expansion review. And today I'm very excited to check out the Heart of the Crown Far East Territory expansion from Japan Anime Games. This is going to keep the same uh, player count, time length, all that good stuff. But this is an expansion to a deck builder that I absolutely am smitten with. I got a chance to play it a couple months ago, and this is the first expansion to Heart of Crown. It's going to add a new princess, it's going to add new cards, and some new different ways for you to potentially win the game. Lots of interesting stuff here. The middle part is me going over all the different cards in the game and giving you my thoughts on those said cards, but let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. All right then, we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of the Heart of Crown Far East Movement Expansion. So first and foremost, we got a handy dandy little rule booklet. It's actually really nice. It's just an FAQ going over each and every card in the game and potential questions you might have about those cards, which is fantastic because you could, I could definitely see people having some questions about these cards because these cards they put in here they're not all straightforward simple cards some of these you can completely uh, build your deck around some of these cards which i really like but we'll talk a little bit more about that later next you're going to get a separator for each and everything that you're going to get in the game which is always nice obviously they want to include that but the star of the show is going to be cards, cards, and more cards. I'm just showing you the randomizer cards instead of having all the piles out here. Uh, but first, let's start with the princess. And as you can see, small text is still one of the issues with this game. The princess is really cool. She's going to be able to banish two cards uh, other than territory cards or curse cards from your hand. And then you're going to select one card from the market with a cost equal to those costs minus one. So essentially, if you have some good cards in your hand, you can trash those but trade them up to get potentially really stinking big point cards, which is obviously kind of nice. Uh, I like the fact they're adding another princess, and this is definitely one that you might consider getting depending on what the makeup of your deck looks like. So I really like her. She's going to allow you to upgrade your cards slash trash cards at the same time. So really neat card. But let's talk about the cards you're going to get in the game. And I'm just going to go over all of them and give my thoughts briefly as we go through. So first we have the tally. This one, five bucks, but it's going to allow you to draw two cards or trash two cards with different names from your hand. Very, very powerful card. You'll notice it does not give you another turn after this so essentially if you're drawing two cards you're looking for coins most of the time next we have the confederation this might be one of my favorite cards in this expansion this is the kind of card that uh, you have to completely build your deck around this card for the most part but you're going to declare declare a subtype each time you play or keep cards from that subtype this turn place one succession point uh, counter on your princess card in your domain. So what this means is essentially this is the kind of card where you have to plan for this card and what you're going to do with this card but if you plan successfully you can just come out of nowhere and just absolutely steal the game from people. This is the kind of card where I love where it looks like you're losing, 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 then boom you get your engine up and running and this thing churns and purrs like a puppy. Actually, puppies don't purr. Also, it's going to give you uh, two actions as well, which I like. So next we have the Samurai. It's going to give you two bucks. Each opponent with five or more cards in their hand must select a card from their hand with a cost of four or five and banish that card temporarily. It's not completely out of the game, but they do not get the card back until somebody else plays another Samurai. Then they get that card back, and then they have to banish temporarily another card. Next we have the Levies. Very interesting card. It's going to cost you three bucks. It's going to be worth one buck to you, and when you play it, you're going to put a Levy marker on any of the uh, the market stacks in the game. That's going to add plus one to that stack, and you yes, you can have more than one Levy in the game. Uh, this one is a direct uh, clone of, I think, of a Dominion card, I recall correctly. Maybe there's a little bit different on the card text, but still, very cool card. Uh, next, we have the Port City, which is a new uh, territory, which is going to lead to two bucks. Pretty self explanatory there. We got the Trader, three bucks. He's going to allow you to take two cards from the top of your draw pile and discard them. Select one card from your discard pile and put it on top of your draw pile in a revealed state. So, if you have a really stinking good card in your discard pile, maybe just say you have one really good card that you want to play quite frequently, the Trader's going to let you do that. Plus, she gives you a coin, which is great as well. Archers, oh my gosh, Archers, a.k.a. the card that I hate the most in this deck. And I hate it in a good way. I'm glad the card is in here because it completely opens up an attack strategy for some people. But man, I loathe this card. So each opponent must reveal the top card of their draw pile. The card is a common card. They must discard it. If it is not, they put the card face down on top of their draw pile. But the big thing is, while this card remains in your play area, you gain one coin each time you play an attack card, which means if you have a lot of attack cards in the game, you can stack these up as it gives you an arrow right there. And it can be potentially very lucrative because if you play another archer, you don't have, you know, you have one, two, three bucks. If you have three archers in your hand, you're looking at a lot of money right there. So, uh, whew, really, really interesting card. Uh, 
So next we have the Kunoi Chi. Select one Kuan, not one. The, the, wow. Select one non Kunochi action card from among those players have kept in their dominions. You gain the effects of the selected card, and this Kunochi gains that card's card type. So essentially, you're going to be able to copy other people's cards that they have played down. Also, it has defense effect where you just put it on top of your draw pile, which is not too bad at all. So I like that card as well. Nice little counter to the archers, a little bit. Each opponent may reveal a cursed card from their hand or discard pile. Those who do not immediately Require a calamity type curse card. Look at the top two cards in your draw pile. Pick one to add to your hand and discard the other one. Uh, another attack. Select one of the following effects. Draw one card, or if you've already played an action card this turn, select a non-territory card from your discard pile and add it to your hand. Another way to get cards back in your hand. The Mining City, which I really like this. This was some foresight here, uh, because they actually give you the ore tokens in the base game, knowing that they were going to put this card in the expansion, which I kind of do like that they had that forward planning, because it keeps the cost of the expansion down. So big thumbs up there. Uh, when you acquire a Mining City, place two ore counters in your mining area. Now, you may remove one counter from your mining area, but obviously, ouch, ouchy, ouch, ouch. It gives you two coins, but what it's going to allow you to do is if you you can acquire a non-succession card from the market with a cost of up to five. So if you're willing to do this, if you're willing to play the long game here, you can get two really stinking good cards or potentially even more, but you have to know that that's going to hurt you a lot. Last but not least, we have the Greedy Fairy, which I really like a lot. Select one of the following effects. Put one coin counter in your coin area. This ability cannot put more than three coin counters in your coin area. And you can just spend those as regular coins. Or pick any two counters you own and remove them from the game. If you do so, pick an another counter that you own and create a copy of it in the same location. A.K.A. Debt Counters. Yes, this will get rid of debt counters, which obviously is great because oh, debt counters stink. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to get inside of the Heart of Crown Far East Terror expansion. Alrighty then, Heart of Crown, the Far East expansion from Japan Anime Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. First on the con side, if you did not like Heart of Crowns, first and foremost, I'm shocked. I'm actually legitimately curious why you did not like Heart of Crowns. Let me know in the comments below because I freaking love this game. But if you did not like it, uh, this one is not going to change your mind. It's still more of the same, which is going to be great for most people watching this video. But if you did not like the first one, this will not change your mind. Also, some of the cards are a little bit more confusing than you would like it to be. Luckily, they did include the FAQ in here. So you probably will find yourself going to the FAQ once or twice when you start implementing this expansion into the game. Also, some of these cards are really stinking annoying in a good way. Like, you're gl I'm glad they're in the game because they allow for different paths to victory and different viable strategies but yes some of them are stinking annoying and some of them uh you can chain together like especially the archers like if you can start getting an archer machine going you can chain those together you can have long turns you can have very profitable turns uh which is why you kind of have to make sure that other people are buying those cards as well but that's you know that's meta stuff so i'm not really going to talk about that uh, that's what I got on the con side. Moving on to the pros. You know, and I was going to go over what my favorite cards were right here, but honestly, you can kind of just watch the middle part of this video, and I give you my thoughts on each and every one of the cards as I go through the cards. But yes, get this. If you have Heart of Crown and you like Heart of Crown, this is a no-brainer. Get this expansion. I like the new princess. I like the new cards. Um, there's nothing really negative I can say about this expansion. You know, it's not a must-own expansion. I still feel like Heart of Crown had a good deal of stuff in the box and it had uh, some good legs with, especially with how the market system worked. But if you want more cards to put in your market, then obviously this is a fantastic expansion. I like what the cards do. I think there's some really interesting cards in there. Yes, there are some one, uh, some that just feel like they're clones of Dominion cards, but there's also some legitimately interesting cards in there, some different strategies and paths to victory that you're going to be able to take. Really like that princess being able to trash two of your cards and get yourself a potentially bigger card, which means that if you can get yourself some really big cards and trash those, then you can get those really expensive, lucrative uh, cards in the middle that give you victory points that are extremely limited. I just like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I really enjoy Heart of Crown. I think it's one of my top 10, 20 games of 2017, and this expansion is only going to give it longer legs, which is a great thing as well. So in the end, Heart of Crown for Far East Territory. Uh, yes, get this. No brainer. Fantastic expansion if you like Heart of Crown. If you enjoyed the stream, please turn to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below. Escape rooms. Have you ever done one? For me personally, no. I need to get on that. I really do. Everybody talks about how amazing they are, especially board gamers talk about how amazing they are. And yet, I've still yet to do one. One of these days. Maybe when I go to Essen. Maybe that's when I'll do it. But let me know in the comments below. Have you ever done an escape room? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.